Uh, yes, it's a down day, but it's generally a down day around the world. Just uh, take a brief look. Germany is down. Hong Kong is down. China's closed. Mainland China's closed for a holiday. Japan closed uh, as well. But just want to note here, China's numbers, uh, economic numbers, were not very good. Retail sales, industrial production in China were well below expectations. So China mainland's closed, but you see Hong Kong uh, weak here. Here in the United States, usual suspects. This is an oil play today that's moving things. So naturally, you're going to see some of the airline stocks uh, weaker. Royal Caribbean uh, and the, uh, the cruise lines are all going to be down. And gold stocks, as you see, like gold fields, uh, are moving to the upside. Fairly typical. Uh, of course, energy stocks, heavily shorted group. If you look at some of the smaller uh, exploration and production stocks that are U.S.-based, that are uh, Permian, Bakken, uh, associated Whiting, Denbury, Range Resources, Laredo Petroleum, some, even particularly some of the smaller names like Laredo. Laredo, you see here, up double digits here. Uh, uh, drillers are very heavily shorted, have been. It doesn't matter what you're talking about, whether you're talking about an onshore driller, whether you're talking about an offshore driller, it doesn't me matter. Uh, these are generally associated with offshore drilling, uh, but Diamond, Sea Drill, Noble Corp, Transocean, all trading up uh, almost double digits. So other than the oil issue, what are the other issues for the market? There's really two issues uh, this week. Again, X, the whole oil question. The first one is, the, can this cyclical rally continue? Can the big moves up that we've seen in financials and energies and transports and retailers even last week, can that continue? Is this the start of a longer term cyclical rally? And secondly, for this week, uh, it, the Fed is going to be cutting. Everyone believes that. But will they provide a rationale to keep cutting? And the debate here is that Mr. Powell doesn't have the votes to keep cutting aggressively and that may be a little more conservative on future guidance. That may be an issue for the markets uh, down the road here. If you take a look at what's been going on on the bottoms up analysts, the people I watch on this question on the valuation, it's a big issue. In the last week or so, a few small numbers of analysts have been cutting numbers because the rally has been so noticeable. So today, Buckingham downgraded J.P. Morgan on a valuation call. Said the stocks run up. It's nice. We still like it. But the prices run up. Wells Fargo downgraded Dick's Sporting Goods today for the same reason. It hit their price target. So we've had all these run-ups, and some of these bottom-up guys are starting to notice and say, you know what? These stocks are getting pricey. That's a problem for the markets. Last week, Loop Capital downgraded Broadcom on the macro concerns. They had their earnings report. They talked about tough environment going forward or a tougher environment going forward. They said the same thing. Thursday, Wells Fargo, we talked about this. This is the same problem. Downgraded Caterpillar on valuation. The same reason Buckingham downgraded J.P. Morgan. My point is, yes, it's nice to see these rallies, but unless there is some underlying earnings boost Global valuations getting better, global economic growth getting better, prices going up. Eventually, analysts notice and say, is there a reason for the prices to be this high? And some of these cases, as you can see here, that rationale is not there. This could be a major reason for the market. That's why you've got to get a resolution of the tariff issue and get a little bit of better news on the economic front, particularly over in Europe and particularly in China, where, as I mentioned, today's economic numbers, not so good.